All right, let's sketch the graph of the nice polynomial function. So in doing this, we're gonna find the zeros, the y-intercept, and the end behavior. Zeros are also known as roots or x-intercepts. All right, so first off, let's think about the zeros. So zeros, because this is in factored form already, it's actually easier to find these zeros than if it was all expanded out. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna look factor by factor until you come by it to an x. So if I think about this first x, and this throws a lot of students off because there's nothing with this first x. If I replace that x with a zero, it would be zero multiplied by the rest of the entire function. Therefore, zero works out to be a, an x-intercept, zero, or root of this function. All right, the next x we come to comes from this first set of parentheses. We have x minus one. Well, if we replace that x with a positive one, it would make that factor equal zero, therefore the entire function equals zero. All right, one more x to go here. We have x plus three. Well, if we replace this with a negative three, it would make that factor equal zero. So that's a, a third x-intercept or zero or root. Next comes our multiplicities. Multiplicities come from factor by factor, looking at what exponent these are raised to. So first of all, we had the zero at zero came from this factor. Well, that's actually raised to the first power, although we don't always write it up there. You have to remember that it means one copy of x or x to the first power. The one came from the next factor, the set of parentheses, x minus one. Well, that's raised to the fourth power, so this gets a multiplicity of four. And finally, negative three from that last factor is raised to that third power, so that's a multiplicity of three. Okay, for touch or cross, this is telling us whether when we get to these x-intercepts, if we go across the x-axis or we just touch and stay on the same side. Well, even multiplicities touch and odd multiplicities cross. So looking at the multiplicities, not the zero numbers themselves, we say, well, one, treating that as odd, so that's gonna cross. Four, even, touch. And then three, odd, is going to cross. All right, the next thing I'm going to find is going to be the y-intercept. The y-intercept always occurs whenever x is equal to zero. So we're going to evaluate this function at an x value of zero. So that means replace each of our x's over on the right-hand side with zeros, and then simplify down. So in this case, because we have one-fourth times zero times negative one to the fourth times three to the third, because we have zero multiplied by everything else, zero times anything is equal to zero. So we have a y-intercept at zero as well. Last thing before we put this all together, let's think about the end behavior. The end behavior is gonna be based on whatever the leading term of this polynomial is. Now that makes our lives a little bit more difficult that this started in factored form, right? Because it's in factored form, it's more difficult to think about what that leading term would be. And we don't want to spend the time for writing four copies of this set of parentheses next to each other and foiling and distributing and three copies next to that of this set of parentheses because that's going to take forever. So instead, let's think about um, if we were to multiply this all the way out, what would that leading term include? Well, positive one-fourth is going to be part of it. Then we have x to the first power. So we're gonna have some x's in the highest power of x, of course. With this next set of parentheses, we have x, and then there are gonna be four copies of this multiplied next to each other. So we're from one to four more, and then three more from this last um, uh, factor. So basically what we can end up doing on this it seems to work out really nicely that if you take those multiplicities that we already identified and you add those together, it's gonna to add up to the correct degree of this polynomial function. If we've done that multiplicities correctly, we're gonna get our degree very nicely as well. Now you would wanna be careful if there was any negative hanging out, that would affect the end behavior. But in this case, we have an even power function, right? X to the eighth power. So the tails go the same direction. And this one has not been flipped upside down because it doesn't have a negative out in front. It's a positive one fourth. So the left side goes up and the right side goes up. All right, so let's put all this information together and get a nice graph going for the original function. The end behavior has both 
ends going up or approaching positive infinity for y values. Let's go ahead and, and include our zeros as zero, positive one, and negative three. Now our y-intercept happened to be at the exact same spot as one of our zeros or x-intercepts. So I'm not gonna include a different point for that. Next, all we have to do is we have to kind of trace in from where we said the end behavior was on the left-hand side and follow the directions that we already indicated as far as touch or cross. So the first one we're gonna to get to as we draw this in is we're gonna start at our end behavior, we're gonna to get to negative three. Okay, at negative three, we said we were going to cross the x-axis. Now I'm gonna be a little bit careful as I draw this in because it's not just um, a multiplicity of one. Because it was a higher uh, multiplicity, we're gonna cut a little bit closer into the x-axis. We're gonna hug into the x-axis a little bit more than if that was a multiplicity of one. The bigger these multiplicities, the more they kind of stick close to the x-axis as they cross or, or touch. All right, the next point we have on our graph is at zero. So we're gonna get back to zero. Now at zero, we're supposed to cross the x-axis. Notice these directions are in the wrong order, but at a zero at zero, we are supposed to cross the x-axis. So the next one we're gonna cross. It's not gonna be quite as hugging in as close to the x-axis because it was just a multiplicity of one. And then finally, we get to one. It's our last point on our graph. I'm gonna come down here and we're gonna stay pretty close to it, but we're supposed to touch the x-axis and come back the same direction. We're gonna go ahead and finish approaching where our end behavior said we were supposed to over here. So after you get your points on there, just follow the touch or cross. Don't worry too much about um, the steepness, I guess, as you're crossing over, but that does change slightly based on the multiplicities. The bigger the multiplicity, the more it kind of sticks in close to the x-axis. So I hope this helps out. Good luck on graphing polynomial functions.